guess who is back? <laughs> Guys, welcome over. Well, I have just finished working 10 hours today, and guess what? I'm excited to be training because guys, I get to tell you all about dashboards and whatever else. And for those of you who watch these videos, I know many of you I've had in class. And so you're used to this sort of energetic sort of approach. And trust me guys, for those of you who haven't had me in class, I'm even worse. Um, I love to train. I love to train. And let me tell you something guys, we've gone through nine different series. Um, I've received so much positive feedback from people about this sort of thing that I'm just going crazy with it. I mean, with how excited people are. And let me tell you right now, this is a really cool section. This is dashboards. Okay, we have four more sections left of the Report Builder series before I would say a person would have all the fundamentals. And the whole entire goal at the beginning was to start by taking sample Microsoft tutorials online that were free and just show people how to use them and basically add an instructor touch to them explaining them. We've done that now, guys. We've done that. Um, from here on out, I'm going to start to add some more extra things to the tutorials. Not many, because I want these to be the base tutorials. It's my later series that I would like to go into things in way more depth. But this will be an example where I'll add something very important to the tutorial at the very end, just to show, to show, everyone, um, show everyone an alternate way of doing things in a nice way. Um, the one thing I want you guys to catch here is dashboards. All right, there's nothing that's more important than a dashboard when it comes to executive decision making. Okay. Dashboard is a key fundamental way. See, what a lot of people don't understand is this. When people are managers, especially as they get higher up in the chain, they tend to delegate. And by delegate, what I mean is people tend to come around and managers tend to make decisions on, on multiple different groups. And in order to do that, they need things such as time. They need things summarized. And a dashboard is our ultimate way to summarize. So we're going to see how to start with the dashboard here. We're going to build one. We'll see a little alternate trick that's not in any courseware or any sort of bookware or whatever that I've seen anyway. And then at the very end, um, we'll have it done. Four more to go. Let's do this. You guys can see I'm still the same. So if you watched any of the videos, you know this. You know the story now. Um, we started with SharePoint 2013. Aha! Uh -huh. I created a SharePoint 2013 image just for this. Well, also for other tutorials too, eventually, such as workflows and things like that that I'll be making, um, and some development ones. And then we came around and we used Report Builder, either launching it this way, the Report Builder, or just bringing it up this way, clicking on the Start menu, All Programs, SQL Server 2012, and then finding Report Builder, it's in one of those, or Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Report Builder 3.0, depending upon however you want to do it. And then we also understood something else too. And by the way, it's connecting to the SharePoint server. I've got it configured to do that. We understood that every one of these tutorials was available. In fact, I included the link every single time to Microsoft's tutorials because what I wanted you guys to see was just what was out there. And there's just so much out there, as you can tell. I mean, as far as in tutorials, Microsoft does a really good job of making them. So what I did was I started out with a tutorial series where I took everything from scratch and showed it on video step by step by step so that you could create your own videos. And this was a beginning series. Will there be a deeper series people keep on um, asking about? Yes, yes, but we got three more videos to cover in this series before we do that, um, before I can take it deeper and begin to really show you guys some interesting tricks within this tool. And there are some interesting ones for certain. Now, once we, once we got this done, once we finished all of that, we started with an initial series and what we would do and what I typically do is I would follow these. Now I've intentionally followed these very carefully because I wanted you to repeat every single thing that I did, even if you needed to. Sometimes you may have gotten the point from the lecture and if you did, that's great. If you did and if you could go ahead and just hit the labs on your own, great. That's what I was looking for. I'm looking at 13 different tutorials that are going to get people up to an intermediate point so that we can go deeper in the future and do cool things. And the other thing I was looking for too was the person who's really dedicated just like, you know, when I went at my start and whatever else and may have not had something, may have not had the ability to pay $2,500 for training for five days. You know, I mean, like what typically, you know, is that's the average cost, I would say, for training to bring in a Microsoft certified, you know, trainer and learning center and pay all the overhead to the training centers and to Microsoft and whatever else. And just have them still get the same quality experience or at least as close as I could give them, you know, without actually being in the classroom watching them. That was my goal. And I hope that I've achieved that. So we'll knock this one out. Let's build a cool dashboard and wait till you guys see this. I mean, this is what it's all about. It's time for cool. If you've hit the other parts of the series now, 
you've gotten past the fundamentals. Now it's time to start seeing some of the tricks. Well, you still got expressions though, and you still got parameters. So there's still two more that are coming up very, very soon. I'm hoping to finish them next week, actually. All right. So we start out, make sure that your only link is normal. Everyone can see the link. You can also look for it on tutorials or whatever else. These, um, this is right off the Microsoft website. No secret, no nothing like that. This is what we're doing. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and take this existing query and build a database from it. So, or not a database, but a, but a data report. Okay. So I'm going to start with the new report. And if you guys have been following any of the other mod um, on lectures, and remember, please cover the other lectures if you're just starting, because it was per I purposely went through them in such a way to build those skills. Click on table or matrix wizard. Now, what that does is that brings up a wizard for doing what? Building tables and building matrices, right? Those are two different data regions that we learned about. Data region means two different ways to lay out a report. That's what the fancy word basically means. We can lay out the word report like a table, which by the way, humans tend to love tables, or we can lay it out like a matrix, which gives us this ability or the matrix to be able to do things like expand the real estate and expand and collapse columns and bring in spe special sorts of analytical tools that we wouldn't have otherwise. All right, now. We're going to go at create a data set. Remember, guys, I've talked about this many, many times, but data set's just a fancy word for a set of data. If you don't understand that, please check the earlier series because I covered this in depth. Now, we're going to go ahead and click net new for data source connection, which is what we understood was just a fancy term for strings um, or, for, or for text that basically says the name of um, the location of the data the database that's using it and where to go to get it. Of course, we can use other things, other, um, um, other things besides just databases. We could use services if we wanted to, anything pretty much, Excel files, shoot. You name it, we could pretty much use it. Um, one of my future tutorials, I wanted to show how to, in fact, do some real tricky things with bringing in data types that many people haven't even seen in tutorials. So here's a data source. We can give it a fancy name if we want to. We'll call it demo data source. Let's be creative. That's not really creative, but you guys see the main point. Now we click build. On build, now we choose a database. Now, the truth of the matter is that this particular query doesn't require any particular database. It'll run anyway because it's a special type of um, query that's been put in there just for demo purposes. So what I'm going to do is take this particular query, right? And I'm going to just put the master database. In my previous tutorials, I used AdventureWorks just to make a point. We'll use AdventureWorks in future tutorials. Here, though, any database works because the data is going to all be contained in the query. It's a demo query. And this was to make it so that your query would work on anybody's machine who is following the tutorial. So let me just click OK. Now we've got credentials. All right, use the Windows user. Yes, yes, don't mess with this. Windows user, definitely. That's what it's going to be like most of the time at work. Although there could be exceptions. Now, once we're done with this part, we've got a tutorial. So let's click Next. Really cool. We can actually drag and drop our way to a query if we want to, which is really nice with the query builder. So if someone's brand new to SQL, um, this tool really helps. Or we can just turn around and cop, um, write a query and copy and paste it. Here, we're just going to copy and paste our, our query. Our query, by the way, came from over here. There's our select. See, I just copied it. I'd already copied it earlier, though. Um, and then we pasted it, right? So there's our actual query right in there. All right, let's go up next. So we have our query, then we run it to test it. I explained the reasons why that was important earlier. Always run to test them because sometimes things that work in regular SQL Server don't run, don't work inside of the report server SQL Server thing. Report, report Builder can sometimes um, have some SQL queries that will not work, that will work in SQL. And believe me, that happens. All right, now we finish, we finish having that part, right? And we come back down and we click Next. All right, now the next important thing that we talked about was grouping, and we have hit grouping left and right. Remember, I'm assuming that the other tutorials are there purposely, eight hours of tutorials, essentially, um, that cover all of the fundamentals here. So when we talk about groups, guys, we start to think about row groups, and we begin to think about column groups, right? Now, we're not really messing with column groups here. We will in more advanced tutorials later on. But for this particular point, we, um, here's a row group. What do we want to lay out on the row? There's one, sales group, right? Then we come down and we want to see some other things that we like to have also, right? So there was sales date first coming down first. Um, and then after we finished having sales date, right? 
we wanted to come down and lay out a few more. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna lay out subcategory. I'm gonna come out and lay out product. There we go, right on that particular part. Then I'm gonna come, and then I'm gonna go next. And let's say I go ahead and I lay out, let's say, oh, sales and quantity inside of values. And you guys see the automatic sum? That means that we're gonna be able to, um, for every single group, we'll be able to summarize these figures. So this was particularly, um, so this was this part to begin with where you guys can take a look at it and see. Um, we basically had our product, subcategory, and sales date, which would basically say, okay, look, um, be able to expand groups by date, then be able to expand by subcategory, and then be able to expand by product. And for each, every single one of these, for date, we can see total sales and quantity. For subcategory, we can see total sales and, and quantity. And for product, we can see total sales and, 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 um, and quantity. Very, very helpful. Now, to be a traditionalist or whatever else, just to make a good point over here, something that's not in the course, but something that I did, um, if you wanted to, you could actually change this up a little bit. And in fact, the course did have you do that. It had you take um, products, right? And it, had, and it had you actually place product in values, which means that product doesn't actually become a group. Whenever you place it in values, it's not a group that we summarize by. It's within a group. So we brought product up, and then product went on top. Quantity was second inside of there. And then once we had quantity actually second, um, we came down and we had sales as third. Then inside of our row groups, we had sales date and subcategory. Very interesting. That was something that I talked about earlier inside the tutorials, the difference between grouping as a row where we summarize by these figures and whenever we don't want to summarize. Um, we only want to see granular detail, what's known as detail level data or row level data. And we had a big discussion on that where I went in depth. Okay, let's go next. subtotals and whatever else, right? This includes automatic drill down, you know, that thing that allows you to be able to see special types of categories and whatever else and what they equal. Sweet, nice, you name it. So we'll look at a style over here and here we'll choose, um, or we'll look at this particular part and you guys see there's blue, which is ocean style, but we're gonna use blocked subtotal below, which is almost what you'll always choose unless you want the summaries on top. Usually people like to see them below. It's just the way people like to see things. Ocean, we can choose a different color. We have gone in this course and changed colors left and right earlier in earlier tutorials. In this particular tutorial, we're just going to leave the default template. If you've watched any of the earlier, um, if you watched the earlier series, you know how to mess with it. I'm going to click finish. Then we always turn around and look at our report at the very beginning by clicking run, right? Run gives us a preview so that we can make sure that our report actually does some very important things such as return data. <laughs> And it does, it does return data. You guys can see that. You can see the actual screen over here. Okay, so nothing new yet, nothing new, new at this point. But guys, this is where SQL Server um, Report Builder 3.0 really began to take off. You see, it introduced all these friendly features. And by the way, let me just expand subcategory a little bit. I click on it, so click on the inside. Bring it over there, just expanding it a little bit there. Um, and what basically happened was that we introduced, um, or Microsoft introduced all these different features and some of these features really sort of brought the Microsoft reporting world into scope. I mean, this was Microsoft's 